Hi, everybody. We're going to go over the PowerPoint for Chapter 10. Uh, this PowerPoint complements the introductory lecture that we had on equivalent networks and network theorems. So you would refer to those notes as you're watching this, and they should mesh together nicely. Okay? So equivalent circuit theories. So we talked about making an equivalent circuit of a, a bigger circuit and reducing it down to one source and one resistor. For Thevenin's theorem, like we did in the lecture, okay, what we're doing basically is when we have a two terminal output for any circuit, we can reduce that down to the same two terminal output, but reduce it down to one voltage one equivalent voltage and one equivalent resistance. So what we're talking about here is, just to review what we did this morning, is we had an original circuit that we we're working with and it had two terminal outputs. And what we did is we reduced it down to an equivalent voltage and equivalent resistance. So the outputs would act the exact same way as the original circuit. Okay, um, we went through a couple of examples of that. That is available in the notes from this morning. So, as far as we're concerned, we just wanna make sure that the two outputs of our equivalent circuit work the same way as the original circuit. Okay, so any two terminal network of fixed resistances and voltage sources may be replaced by a single voltage source. Okay, so what we did was we went and calculated the open circuit voltage across there and we did the internal resistance. There are two ways to do that. We did it by shorting out the power supply and calculating resistance from the two terminals. The other way we can do it is we can measure the, or calculate the closed circuit current across the two terminals or the short circuit current. And we can divide the equivalent resistance by that current to get our equivalent resistance. All right, Ohm's law basically. So there are two ways to do it. Um, the way we did the, this morning by shorting out the power supply is called the ohmmeter approach. All right, well, we're looking back into the circuit, not from the power supply, but from the terminals. We can use this when we start to discuss Wheatstone bridges later in this chapter. We can discuss how to uh, come up with an equivalent circuit for a Wheatstone bridge. All right, and we're also going to discuss, as pointed out here, examples where there are two or more voltage sources in the circuit. Norton's theorem, as we discussed in the, um, in the lecture, what it does is instead of replacing the circuit with an equivalent voltage and an equivalent resistance, it actually replaces it with an equivalent current source and an equivalent resistance in parallel with it. So with Thevenin's, the resistance was a series with the equivalent voltage source, but in Norton, it's in parallel with it. Okay, that's a big difference. Now, the Norton resistance is the same as the Thevenin resistance. It's calculated the same way. Okay. Go back. So again, any two terminal network of fixed resistance voltages can be replaced by a single constant current source and an equivalent resistance. Now there's another aspect in the networks called dependent sources. So dependent sources are current and voltage sources that are dependent on a voltage or current appearing in another branch of the circuit. 
So you can take, uh, you can take, for example, a transistor where what's happening with the, what's happening at the collector and emitter is actually controlled by the current at the base and the voltage level there. So uh, that can be considered a dependent source if we take it off the collector, all right? So an example here is, uh, there are four examples. There's a voltage controlled voltage source. That means that the output voltage is a constant times whatever that external voltage is. There's a current controlled voltage source where the voltage is that constant times the current that is a product of somewhere else in the circuit, a current controlled current source. So that is a current source that is affected or dependent on the current level of another part of the circuit and a voltage controlled current source where it's a current source that's dependent on a voltage level somewhere else in that circuit or another circuit. An example is we have this circuit here. So the circuit has an independent 120 volt source. It has a five ohm internal resistance. So we know from previous studies that when we have an open circuit voltage, it would be 120 volts. But when we put a load on here, when we put a load, that 120 volts will drop a bit because we will have a drop across the internal resistance. Okay, so what we've added in series with the independent voltage source is a current controlled voltage source here. And this will supply a voltage of five times I1. So the current generated here, current drawn here, is affecting this voltage source. Okay, and what we're trying to do here is we are trying to offset the voltage drop that's on the internal resistor. We're trying, to, we're trying to offset this voltage here. So if this is one milliamp, okay, if this is one milliamp, then this will generate five millivolts and that's what we'll drop across here, okay? Just to, um, just to offset the drop that's on the internal resistor so we get the full voltage here, all right? So we have a 120 volt independent voltage source, which means it does not depend on external uh, levels. And that is in series with a current controlled voltage source, CCVS, okay? We also introduced this morning the concept of delta to Y transformation. So delta and Y networks are ways that resistors or loads can be connected to each other. So this would be a Y configuration. We have three separate points, A, B, C, and then meet in the middle. And we have a delta configuration, which is a triangle. Okay, now there are formulas that, what happens here, the theory is when you convert from Y to delta or delta to Y, that the resistance between A and C on the Y will be the same as the resistance between A and C on the delta. So we are going to get into a lot of examples of delta to Y transformations later in the unit, okay? So what we see here is different ways that those can be configured. So what we have here is, this is a delta network. Okay, so we have A, B, and C. But this can also be represented by what's called a pi network, okay? This can be represented by a pi network. So we have, this is still RAC, this is RAB, and this is RBC. Okay, and you can see where the, where the term pi can come from. If we focus on here, if 
we focus here, it does resemble the symbol for pi. Okay, so that is our pi network. Then for a Y network, okay, this can also be reconfigured to look like a T network. Now, in a delta configuration, the resistors are denoted by the two terminals they're connected to. So RAC means it's between A and C. And we have RAB and RBC. Then here, in a Y network, the resistors are denoted by one letter, one letter subscript, according to the terminal they're connected to. So RA, RB, and RC. All right, so what happens in the delta to Y is we are going to um, we still have our three points A, B, and C and we have RA, RB, RC. Now the resistor that's going to be between A and B in the converted delta we'll call that RZ and there is a formula there's a formula to calculate what RZ is going to be according to these resistors, okay? According to these resistors. So what we have here is we have, these are for converting from delta to Y, okay? We have several delta to Y, so these are the formulas. So RA is going to be, if we look on, if we remember the other screen, our A of the Y is going to equal our YZ over our X plus our Y plus our Z. All right? The formulas are a bit repetitive as the denominator is the same for each conversion. It's just a numerator that changes. Okay? As we work on examples, you'll see that. Okay? To go from Y to delta, the numerator is the same. RAB plus RBC plus RCA over, and depending on which one we want to convert to. Okay, we will be doing a lot of those examples. So uh, this is just an introduction. When we get there in our lesson, you'll see what we're talking about. Okay. So an example here is we have this network here. We can't solve this network as it is. Okay, there is no equation for finding RT here. But if we took, if we took this little configuration here between R1, R2, and R5, okay, you'll see there that there is a delta. There's a delta present there. So if we label these A points A, B, and C, what we can do is we can convert that delta. We can convert that delta to be a Y. So R3 and R4 stay the same. R3 and R4 stay the same, but we've converted R1, R2, and R5 to be RA, RB, and RC. Using the formulas that I gave you, or that I showed you before that are in the book. And now, see there's no formula here, but here the formula for RT now is we have something we can work with. It's RA plus RB plus R3 in parallel with RC plus R4. Okay, so using a delta to Y conversion, 
we've converted these resistor values to these resistor values, and we're going to come up with the same answer, or with the right answer. Okay, so that is one application for the delta to y conversion and y to delta. Okay. Now there is. Another place where you'll see this, if you are getting into the electrical end of things, if you're getting into the electrical end of things, then you will see with three phase that there are different ways to configure loads on motors and transformers. So what some nameplates do, I showed you nameplates last week that have power factor on them, but a lot of them for, for three phase connections also have delta or y options. So you see here, there is a y option. You see the y symbol here and a delta option. So what you do is you configure the terminals that are inside the motor to be y or delta. And that's how you do the conversion. Now, we have a couple of more examples. Here, we have delta to y, delta and y. Then we have here and here as well, delta and y. So 220 volts, delta, 380 volts, y. Okay. So that's just something to keep an eye on as you get further into the program. As you get further into the program. But I just wanted to introduce you to that. So our summary. Uh, any two terminal network of fixed voltages and resistances okay, can be represented by thevenins with, a, with an equivalent voltage in series with an equivalent resistor or using a Norton equivalent, which is uh, an equivalent constant current in parallel with an equivalent resistor, right? Um, we just talked briefly about dependent sources that are they depend on the voltage or current from some other branch of the circuit. We can, uh, we can use Thevenin and Norton, but we'll get more into that later on, on how those work together with dependent sources. We introduced briefly delta to Y and Y to delta, okay? And we, um, we have a lot of work to do this unit. I just wanted to give you this introductory um, PowerPoint. Review the lecture that we did previously. Uh, look for practice questions and we will continue on towards the end of the semester. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your week. <laughs>